I'm Shettle, Die by the Bear. We're at the Hambury Festival in Drama. Sun is shining, it's warm, we are getting ready to have some good beers from all over the world. So we are standing here with Lover Beer from uh, Italy. Uh, can you tell us a little about, uh, about your brewery, where you're from, what you do? Yeah, so we are from the northwest of uh, Italy, uh, a little town called Marentino, close to Turin. And uh, we was born as a brewery at the end of 2009, after more than 10 years as a brewer. Uh, Italy is a country of winemakers. Uh, and we don't have a beer history, but that's good for us because we can create everything new. And so the inspiration of our beers is uh, to recipes, especially from the country from north, just like Belgium or England uh, with a history of beer. And we try to give a reinterpretation, joining that history with our culture, so winemaker culture. Uh, for this we use, uh, for example, grapes sometimes, and we use also some techniques, uh, typical from winemakers and then we have uh, mainly sour beers. Why sour beers? <laughs> because uh, for me I, I like uh, to, to taste uh, all kind of beer if it's, the beer is good but uh, for brewing uh, I like to, to brew sour because it's, a, it's very interesting in, uh, to, to, to know what happened uh, with the microbiologists and uh, with uh, bacteria with uh, yeast, wild yeast uh, and uh, this is very for me is very interesting interesting to, to, to study the past uh, for create a new product in the future and for this reason I, I, I want to, to, to brew sour beer. Um, you mentioned you use uh, berries or grapes, um, how did you come to, to use this? Uh, we we use um, uh, we are in the in the winemaker area and this and the farmer uh, they uh, they gr they growing uh, different kind of fruit uh, and for this reason we use uh, specially wood for for the beer but uh, we use fruit uh, typically grapes uh, and or plums uh, or other fruit uh, for uh, restarting the fermentation for uh, for for have a complex fermentation uh, not only for the, the aroma but for uh, for have a character of the beer and also sometimes for starting the fermentation because we got yes. one beer that's birbera that's a spontaneous fermentation because we don't add any yeast at all we added the wall fruit uh, the grape is uh, uh, Barbera grapes, and the fermentation starts uh, from the yeast naturally present on the skin of the grapes. So I guess this is uh, something absolutely different. Um, if there's one beer that you are especially proud of, which is your signature beer, what would that be, and what kind of beer is it? Um, beer, I think it's a beer Brunia. Beer Brunia is uh, my. Is a, is, a, is a my tribute to Creek, uh, Creek and Lambic, because uh, uh, we don't use cherries, we use plums, and uh, we have a, a base of the beer. The name for us is Bière du Lambic, because it's, it's not Lambic, because we are in Piedmont, not in uh, in uh, Brussels, and um, but is uh, have uh, one years in uh, in barrique, uh, one years old aging. And uh, after we add in these special plums for Piedmont, very, very special, special for, the, uh, for the smell. And uh, for one, uh, one month, very generous uh, portion. And, this, and uh, the people like it, that uh, for this reason we are proud of this beer. The plums are very special plums because they are called Ramassina. And they are small, wild plums typical of our area. Yes, yes. Come from uh, um, in the medieval age. Come from uh, Damascus, from Syria. But now is a very special plums of uh, our area. Thank you very much, and uh, I think I'm going to enjoy your beers at this festival. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Pentagon for Sully. Very nice indeed. Oh, this is cozy. 
So we're here with the Harpoon Brewery from Boston. Uh, hello. Hello, how are you doing? I'm great. And your name is? My name is Jesse Brenneman. Okay. Awesome. Can you tell me a little bit about your operation in Boston? Yeah, we, uh, we're a large regional craft brewery in Boston. Uh, we're located right downtown, right on the water. And uh, our biggest market is New England. How did it come to that you are here in Norway today? Um, the owner of, of our brewery, Harpoon, uh, was good friends with Jens. And um, Jens had been over in the States earlier this year and invited us to come to the festival. And um, I don't know why they chose me to come over here, but they asked me to come over and, and serve Harpoon beer. You having a good time? I'm having a very good time. How are you liking Norway? I like Norway a lot. It's, uh, it reminds me a lot of, of where I grew up in New Hampshire. So um, the people are, have all been friendly. Awesome. You have some uh, interesting beer here today with uh, sherries in them. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that one? Uh, this is the Black Forest. Uh, it's an imperial chocolate cherry porter. So we've, uh, we use cocoa nibs as well as a blend of sweet and tart cherries. Um, both of which went into the uh, fermenter right after fermentation completed uh, to kind of give it that black forest cake type of uh, flavor and aroma. What's uh, special about uh, Harpoon? Uh, what's your signature? What's, uh, what makes you unique? Uh, I think one of the biggest things that makes Harpoon unique is our, our best-selling beer, our IPA. It's, uh, it's not a West Coast IPA, it's not an East Coast IPA. It's uh, a very well-balanced IPA. The hops don't slap you in the face. So you can you can drink three or four and then taste something else afterward. I'm having a great time. This is this is a phenomenal festival. So, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Yeah. So we are standing here with uh, Alvin. Uh, can you tell us a little bit uh, about yourself? Okay, I'm Stefan um, from Belgium, Brewery Alvine. Uh, Brewery Alvin was uh, invented in uh, 2003. Um, they started in a small house in the garden. Uh, after two years, they saw it was not that easy to brew in this uh, small house, so they uh, changed uh, the place five kilometers further away, and uh, they had an, another brewery, a big, a little bit of a brew with 700 uh, hectares. Uh, but in 2007, uh, because of the big selling in America and Scandinavia, Italy, they, uh, they were obliged to uh, change another one. So they changed to another big brewery, 2,000 hectoliters right now. Uh, they were with two uh, uh, brothers and brother-in-law. But in 2008, uh, Mark de Keukelere became became to the team. And he is a biologist. And he picked up um, a yeast stream in the Auvergne, in France. And Mark cultivated uh, the yeast during uh, two and a half years. To looking for the best strain. So now this uh, yeast now we're using for the sour range, only for the sour range because it's a lactobacillic uh, yeast. So uh, it comes, it makes the, the beer sour, of course. So that's why we use it only for the, the sour beer. The sour beer is a big hit now, also in America. We're brewing a lot now. Uh, we sending uh, containers. Uh, to it of, for it, of, of it now, so um, yeah, it's uh, busy right now. Is this the famous Morpheus yeast this, you're talking about? Uh, this is indeed the famous Morpheus yeast, yeah. <laughs> and Mark, we call him uh, the yeast whisperer because it's like his child. He feed it, he do it everything with it. <laughs> yeah, luckily, his wife uh, don't let him sleep with it. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, sour beers, I've tasted some of your sour beers before, uh, barrel aged beers. Mm -hmm. uh, is it only sours or is it different types of styles of beers as well? Um, well, you have, of course, in Belgium, you have the lambic styles. This is uh, spontaneous uh, fermentation. This is another style of brewing. Uh, what we do is uh, the lactobacillic is uh, like sour milk bacteria. So, uh, but indeed, uh, when you put it on uh, barrels, a whiskey barrel or uh, we use uh, wine barrels for a moment. It gives another taste like vanilla touches. And so, yeah. uh, where would you say the main market for Alvin is? It, is it Belgium? Is it the States? Where is it? Uh, yes, uh, more than 70%, 75% goes to America. Then uh, Italy, uh, Spain, uh, Norway, the Scandinavian countries. Yeah, this export is very important for the, for the brewery. Yeah. What about uh, um, 
collaboration brews. I know Alvin has done some with the, the hand brewery, which we are yeah, at now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we did a lot of uh, collaboration brews in the past with uh, Struse or and with hand. Uh, the last one was uh, last year, the ESB Sour. It was the hand, uh, Alvine, and uh, the, the other name I forgot. Demol. The Molen, yes, yeah, yeah, sure, 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 yeah, yeah. It is a, it is a very good beer. It's one of the best at the festival, I think. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. This is Hafi, a Dybar beer. Um, we're at uh, Hombrigri Beer Festival, uh, and we are here drinking one of the highlights of the whole festival. This is uh, Hombrigri's uh, Hombak. Um, <clears throat> it's brewed in 2006, and then uh, uh, put two years on barrels. <clears throat> It's a sour wild ale, 7.5%, uh, um, and it's just amazing. Um, sourness, vinegar, a lot of wood. Um, <laughs> it just smells amazing. And it opens up your whole palate. It's, for me, this is possibly the best beer at this festival right now. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> we're here with the uh, BFM. Please introduce yourself to this Is he still young alive? Man. I think it is. What's his name? Uh, Harry. Harry, hi Harry, how are you doing? <laughs> so, BFM, how are you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm okay, yeah. yeah. Can you please tell us a little bit about uh, your brewery uh, and what, um, what kind of beers you specialize in? So, last time I was in the brewery, it was October 2012, I guess. <laughs> We produced uh, actually the image that uh, that people have in other countries and Switzerland is not exactly what we sell in Switzerland. Mm. The, the sour beers are mostly sold for export and uh, for the local ma national market. We have a range of beer like uh, like Lameul. It's a dry beer with a uh, sage. Mm. We have La Salamande that you can find in Norway as, as well. It's a wheat ale with spices yep. and uh, other one, other ones like that. Uh, BFM. Uh, has been the pioneer in the craft beer scene in Switzerland because I have started uh, this adventure 17 years ago. So if you consider that the ages for the years for uh, a beer or the brewery, something like uh, the ages for animals, you make time seven. So it's something like a, a hundred years old brewery, <laughs> and uh, I, I'm considered a bit as a dinosaur. For example, we have ne we have no IPAs. Everybody makes an IPA, wonderful IPAs. So why should I brew one? I agree, I agree. I mean, no. <laughs> so we have our crap and it's, it's okay like that. But um, you guys make saison, um, sour bears. You make, you make stout, but you kind of make it your, your own thing. I never follow styles. I hate styles. I cannot follow a recipe or something like that. It has to be a, something like original. So about the oh, <laughs> what does it mean in uh, in Norwegian? Oh, it's when you when you don't get laid, you make that sound. Okay, d'accord. <laughs> um, so the story behind this saison, uh, we wanted to make a. Uh, sour beer for the 15th anniversary of the brewery and then uh, traveling uh, throughout the US I was stuffed of having saison, farmhouse saison, 12 ABV with curcuma, uh, pineapples, uh, aged in a rum barrel with a dry hopping of Simcoe mm -hmm. and it's a traditional farmhouse ale from Belgium and I was, it sucked me a lot. As I said let's make something really easy with one malt, one hop and we drop it in a, in a barri barrel. It's an old barrel of, that I used for Bonchien before. Yep. And we'll see what, what it will give. And it gives this kind of slightly sour stuff. But I think that's a bit nearer of what was a saison 100 years ago, um, before pasteurization. Yep. That uh, the, the super style saison uh, monkey stuff. With <laughs> <laughs> so I'm drinking the Bonchien. Is that pronounced right? Abbey de saint bonchon Yes, that one. Uh, it's an 11% beer, um, which is really refreshing, uh, and it doesn't taste like it's a strong beer. Yeah. Um, 
What's the idea behind that bear? bear? Why do you want to make it so strong? Because it is really, really good. Um, I guess uh, for the beginning, I thought that uh, having something like 10, 11 ABV would hide a bit uh, the development of microorganisms. But it's not exactly the case. And then uh, we have never changed, I don't know why. But do you know that bon chien means something like good dog in French? Good dog? Yeah. We had a cat named after good dog at the brewery. And when she died, we decided to make a saint out of bon chien. So she became Saint bon chien. <laughs> then I, I added abbey, like abbey, yeah. in front of the name. You know, in Belgium you have abbey of I don't know what, and a new abbey, <laughs> thousand years old. I said I can't have my own abbey. <laughs> So it's a sacred cat named after a dog? Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any signature yeast or, or, or um, you know, a house yeast that you always use? Yeah. We've been using uh, the same liquid yeast for more than 10 years now. It's a kind of uh, Belgian Abbey beer, whatever. Actually, we don't know the name of this beer because I have a friend who used to work in a brewery and they had a collection. He gave us this yeast. But he forgot the name, and now he's not working anymore for this brewery. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a fun place to work, man. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for the interview, and um, I'm looking forward to drinking your beers. Yeah, merci. Cheers, merci. <laughs> So we're here at the uh, Hombregris Festival with uh, Ole Rickard. Uh, how has the day been so far? It's been a great day. We have uh, about uh, 2,000 people inside uh, the area here. So it's a great day. Many happy beer faces and a uh, lot of good beers. So we are satisfied. That's really nice to hear. It seems like um, it's a really successful festival and people are really uh, enjoying themselves. Did you expect it to be this big? No, when we started, uh, this is the third uh, festival. When we started uh, in 2012, it was uh, only half, uh, half the, the, the people uh, uh, compared to today. But I think we are, we are, we are uh, this is uh, as big as we can uh, have it. So uh, uh, the idea is to introduce uh, exciting new, uh, exciting breweries to the, to the Norwegian beer drinkers. So every year we invite two uh, Norwegian breweries, and uh, the rest of us is friends friends of us from all over Europe. They're all uh, high quality uh, brewers with uh, amazing beers. That's about it. That's uh, about it. Really, thank, thank you so much for doing this festival and uh, talking to us. And uh, we're really happy to be here. And uh, this is awesome, man. Thank you. You're welcome. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> yeah, sorry, it's a little bit early, still got to do a bit more work. <laughs> so, uh, this is Hafi from Die by Beer. We're here with Andrew from Boss. How are you guys doing? Um, so, um, tell us a little, about, little bit about your operation in Boss. Uh, right now, we only brew about a thousand liters a week, but we're planning on expanding in the next couple of weeks to be, yeah, we're getting some new tanks in, two double batch tanks, and a couple of bright tanks, a new hot liquor tank. So, we're just really expanding. So, we're trying to keep with American Pales, but also be quite traditional. So we've got things like the LT Stout, LT Porter, and also all the beers of Dyna. Yeah. Awesome. You guys have uh, growler fields at your brewery. Yeah, Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we've been starting that on Thursdays. So we're trying to expand that a little bit. But before we had the problem of people in Boston couldn't really try the beer. Yeah. So uh, they had to go to one bar and stuff like that. You can't really take it home. So it's our way of sort of getting people so they can try at home, have parties, enjoy the beer. So we get christenings, skydivers, everyone turning up and grabbing it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And it's a big success, yeah? Yeah, we're far too busy. Yeah. We always sort of think that we keep running out of beer, actually. So it's kind of funny. Yeah, it's a pretty healthy bottle, actually. I would yeah. like to be able to buy that from my local brewery. Yeah. <laughs> 
so we're sort of doing that. Like, yeah, it's working really well, and we're really hoping it's going to take off in the summer, especially in Boston. Extreme sports, beer, yeah, it's good. Yeah. But you are a new brewer. Uh, what kind of experience do you have from other breweries? Uh, I did the heavy work uh, program, same as Ian, the previous brewer, and I just actually lived in Canada for the last three years. So I only came back in November. Okay. Um, so I brewed in Scotland, England, New Zealand, and Canada. So I've done everything from, I started really traditionally in the UK, went into Pilsner, and then back to the craft scene, and just going on from there. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, but Voss uh, has a special signature. They're doing some. Um, how to say it, um, older styles, uh, using yeah. special uh, ingredients that's uh, based in a lot of Norwegian tradition. Yeah, we're using some very traditional Norwegian ingredients. So we're thinking about using bike in the future and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, it's really cool. I mean, it's a lot of like boss. I mean, you get all the sort of new people that move to boss, but you also uh -huh. get people who speak boss and all who turn up. And you know, like, yeah, you've got the whole smile over stuff. Yeah, and it's uh -huh. kind of nice to be able to sort of reflect that. So although we've got these really hoppy beers, which are more modern, but also very traditional. It's good. Like we get people walking in asking for spracha or quite a bit, which is quite funny. <laughs> yeah. Smoking hops? Yeah, that's Dag's idea, which I must admit I was trying to be skeptical at first, but it's working really well. We did it for the L2 Stout and it works perfectly actually. Mm. So it really complements, yeah, we use a little bit of smoke malt, but most of it's the hops. And it's really cool. We started looking to do that a bit more. Yeah, the, we really like the L2 series. And it was really is quite boss, like, you know, going to the L2s, like, actually brewed some beer in the L2s with you a couple of weeks back. Yeah, it's kind of a big thing of the culture. It's good to be able to reflect that. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, no, thanks. Best of luck to us in the future. Uh, we think they're awesome here in Die by the Bear, so you should check them out too. Thank you very much. Cheers.